Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lex uh, lecture 5.3, Atomic Operations in CUDA. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn about atomic operations in CUDA. We're going to introduce atomic operations in general, and then we're going to uh, show you the types of atomic operations there are in CUDA, and we're going to uh, introduce the concept of intrinsic functions, and then uh, we're going to show a basic histogram kernel using the atomic operation. This is a review slide from the previous lecture and where we show the race condition without atomic operations. This is an undesirable timing where uh, we initialize the memory uh, x location as 0, and then thread 1 and thread 2 both try to update it by adding 1 to it. And then uh, what we showed uh, in, with this timing, uh, both of them are going to get the O value 0, and then uh, and the memory location will end with value 1 rather than 2 that uh, should have happened uh, if we uh, uh, reflect the updates from both threads properly into the location. So the atomic operations are used, uh, are designed to prevent that kind of race condition. And um, so uh, if we perform uh, atomic operation, the atomic operation is a single instruction, uh, hardware instruction in a, uh, that can be performed on a memory location address. So we're going to assume that the atomic operation is going to access a particular memory location uh, indicated by address. So um, the atomic operation is going to read the old value, calculate the new value, and write the new value to the location all in one instruction. And this is why it's called atomic, because it's uh, these three parts of that operation is going to be performed together without uh, being partitioned. So it's like an atom that cannot be uh, you know, uh, uh, easily separated or partitioned um, you know, into, uh, into, uh, different, uh, into additional components. So the hardware ensures that no other threads can, be, can access the location until the atomic operation is complete. So whenever one thread is performing an ato atomic operation, none of the other threads can come in to access that same location, the location that is being updated by the, atom uh, by the first thread. And any other thread that want to access the location will typically be held in a queue waiting for its turn. And all the threads will perform atomic operations serially and, uh, if they, are, they modify the same location. So uh, at any point in time, only one of them can, do the, uh, can go and execute this atomic operation. So it will be done one after another, one after another. So that's why uh, they will be done serially. So um, as a, a programmer, you need to be aware that the atomic operation can be very expensive in terms of parallelism because uh, this, uh, this, the sequence of uh, atomic operations done by all the threads will be done in serial. So we effectively serialize the execution of all these threads because of that atomic operation. The atomic operation in CUDA is uh, made available to the programmers in the form of a function call. And these are actually function calls that will be translated into single instructions. And um, in literature, we refer to these functions as intrinsic functions, or sometimes we just call them intrinsics. So um, we, we have these function calls that would uh, allow us to do atomic add, subtract, increment, decrement, um, minimal value, maximal value, exchange, and compare and swap. And all these different atomic operations have different uh, kind of functionality. Uh, the arithmetic ones are pretty obvious, and the max-min ones are also obvious because uh, you, you can use that to essentially um, uh, keep maintaining the maximal value or minimal value of a large data set. However, uh, the exchange one and the uh, compare and swap one may not be immediately clear to you. The compare and swap, for example, uh, would uh, take two values. One is a key value, one is a new value. So um, when you go to a, uh, do a compare and swap on a, a global memory location, you will, you will fetch the O value of the global memory location and compare that against the key. And if the key matches, 
the old value, and then the new value will be uh, will be uh, written into the location. So effectively, you will be swapping the new value with the old value. You're not accumulating anything into it. You're actually doing a swap at that point. So um, the, each of these uh, uh, atomic operations can allow you to you know to to do uh, certain functionalities that uh, sometimes hard to do uh, with other types of atomic operations. So if you're really interested in this topic, this is uh, uh, a topic that you can easily learn more by going onto the websites and uh, maybe Wikipedia or related uh, uh, media to, be, to learn more about each of these types. And CUDA provides all these types of atomic operations. And um, uh, you can read the CUDA C programming guide 4.0 or above or uh, later for more details. So for this lecture, I'm going to just uh, pick atomic add operation and then uh, uh, give you more details of how you can use this to implement a histogram. So the atomic add operation uh, that we use will be a, uh, a signed 32-bit atomic integer add. And um, so this function will take two parameters or arguments. The first one is a pointer to the memory address that uh, you're going to in, uh, increment uh, and this, uh, or you're going to add. And the second one is the value that you're going to add to that memory location. So uh, you will read the 32-bit word um, old value pointed to by the address. So uh, you'll use the address as a pointer, go to global memory, read that uh, uh, value, and um, that value we will call old. And then, uh, the, this could also be in the shear memory. So if you uh, uh, point the pointer to a shear memory location, then that uh, pointer is going to access the shear memory. If you point that pointer to a global memory, it will uh, access the global memory location. So the same function can be used to perform atomic operation in either the global memory or shear memory, depending on the pointer that you, point, that you uh, give to that function. And then um, it will compute O value plus va uh, old plus va uh, new value, and then it will store the result back to the memory at the same address. And uh, the function re will return the integer value. Essentially, it is the O value that the function will return. As you can see, it does a read into the uh, into the return value, and then it would uh, modify the uh, address, the uh, the value in the memory address by adding value to its old value and uh, write the new value into the address. So uh, there are actually other additional atomic adds in CUDA that we are not going to be using, but I wanted to mention uh, for uh, your information. So um, instead of add, uh, uh, doing atomic operation on a signed integer, which could be positive or negative, you can also uh, interpret that uh, location as an unsigned 32-bit integer. So this will allow you to, uh, to have a histogram, for example, of all positive uh, 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 values. So um, the, the way that uh, this function is used is that uh, you will receive a, unsigned, a pointer to an unsigned integer, at, um, uh, and then uh, you will also receive an unsigned uh, integer value to be added to the location. And the return value will also be unsigned integer. You can also have a 64-bit integer atomic add. And this is essentially to allow you to, uh, to, be, uh, to uh, uh, maintain a histogram that can, have, um, that can have very, very large values in each bin. And um, in some cases, because of the large data set, we may end up adding a huge number of values into the histogram bins. So sometimes we, we are afraid that we may have an overflow situation where the, um, the total value exceeds the 4 gig uh, value that 32-bit integers can su support. So oftentimes, for um, data processing applications, um, developers often want to have access to 64-bit integer, um, unsigned integer uh, histograms for uh, keeping track of the histogram of a very large data set. And you, uh, we can also have single precision floating point add, and, but this is only available in GPUs that have more uh, capability uh, two point, uh, more than uh, 2.0. So um, this 
essentially allows you to uh, to find to go to a memory location with a floating point value and you do a floating point a single precision floating point add to the contents of the address and return the original floating point value of that address so now we can go to the uh, the histogram uh, example and show how we can e use a atomic operation in CUDA to implement a histogram kernel. So um, this picture show, uh, shows a review of the sectional, uh, sectioned histogram algorithm that we showed in the previous lecture. So um, uh, remember that uh, we divided the histogram into sections and then uh, each thread will, uh, will be reading uh, from its own section and then uh, uh, you will do the iter uh, all the threads will iterate until they finish uh, their sections. So, but unfortunately, this is not a good algorithm for CUDA because um, all the threads are going to be reading from non-adjacent locations in the same iteration. So this is a perfect example of uncoalesced access um, in, uh, in, that we already discussed in the uh, previous lectures. So um, this will give us very poor um, memory bandwidth utilization uh, when we uh, execute the kernel. So what we need to do is to, uh, to use a better thread to data mapping by uh, having all the threads to read from consecutive locations in the first iteration. And then all of them should move to the, uh, the next section and then all the th threads should be reading consecutive locations in that section so that we can maintain the coalesced memory accesses through the process. So this is the example uh, that shows iteration one where uh, we have all the threads to read consecutive locations, thread zero relocation zero, thread one uh, relocation one. And this is exactly the same pattern that we had in the vector addition um, uh, uh, thread to data mapping. So we should expect to see exactly the same uh, I expression uh, in thread to data mapping in the kernel. And because all the adjacent threads are reading adjacent input letters, uh, these uh, threads are going to be making coalesced memory accesses. And then after this iteration, we're going to uh, have all the threads to move to the second section, and they'll all be reading consecutive locations, and they will be uh, doing their histogram. So this is the basis of the, the kernel that we'll be showing in the next slide. So here is a basic histogram kernel using um, uh, uh, that receives a pointer to the input buffer. Essentially, it's the input to the characters, the, uh, the array of characters that uh, we're going to be uh, doing histogram on. And then uh, this, it also will receive the size of the uh, the input. So the, this size variable tells us the number of characters uh, there are in the, um, in the input buffer. And finally, we have a histogram, which is uh, essentially a histogram of uh, 256 uh, uh, in integers. And um, uh, we will be using the buffer value, which is character. A character can be of one of the 256 values. We will use the value to index into this histogram and do an atomic add to, the, um, uh, to that location so that we can increment the appropriate histogram bucket according to the value of that character. So here is the kernel where uh, we do the um, i equal to thread idx.x plus block idx.x times block dim.x. This should be a very familiar pattern to you that uh, maps all the consecutive threads to the first consecutive locations in, the, uh, in, in that character buffer. And then uh, we will uh, define the stride. The stride in this case means the, uh, the, the uh, distance that a thread will uh, advance from one iteration to another iteration. So um, the total number of threads we have in this uh, grid is going to be block dim dot x times grid dim dot x. The number of threads in a block times the number of blocks in the uh, grid. So this gives us a total number of threads uh, that we have in uh, uh, executing the kernel. So this gives us the total coverage 
of elements in each section. And um, so uh, every time we finish one section, all the threads will advance by this amount to go to the next section. So here we go into a while loop. And uh, uh, the loop is going to test whether the index that you calculate, uh, you use for this iteration is still smaller than the size. If, the, if your, your index already exceeded the size, then you should exit the while loop and um, uh, terminate your kernel. And then uh, if your si index is still within the size, then you would do an atomic add by taking the uh, buffer element i, which is the, the location that you're currently mapped to, and um, you take that buffer, so which is a character, and then you use that character to select one of the histogram uh, array elements. That's the one that you're going to increment. And you call the atomic add up, uh, function with a pointer to that location. So this uh, is, uh, goes back to the, um, the uh, ex uh, explanation about the atomic fun uh, uh, intrinsic function. So you will, you will send the pointer to that location and then a value one because you're going to add one to that location. So this uh, allows you to increment the appropriate histogram uh, uh, bucket by one. And then you will uh, move to the next section. So uh, all the uh, threads will, uh, will continue to iterate until they all complete um, the, uh, the, all the iterations and when they, their indices all have exceeded the size. So this is a very simple uh, kernel that allows a group of uh, threads in a grid to continue to process all the uh, input buffer characters until they have exhausted the input. So this allows you to pr process an arbitrarily long sized um, input uh, array of characters, essentially the input text. So uh, this completes the kernel, the base kernel that uses atomic operation to perform a histogram operation. So uh, we don't have any recommended reading. And in the next lecture, I'm going to go over some performance considerations and show you a kernel that will perform much, much faster than this basic kernel. Thank you.